bats, flyers of the night, mysterious creatures hiding in caves and abandoned buildings about whom many of us don't even know that they are not birds but belong to the family of mammals. The Apuseni Mountains in Romania is one of the regions that hosts the largest populations of bats in Europe. Due to the ever-growing human pressure, however, bats and the caves serving as their homes have to be protected in many places. In this film, we will follow in the footsteps of a bat conservation team who are trying to explore and solve the problems threatening the bat population with the support of the Life Nature Programme of the European Union. Winter is a very important period for bats. Local bat species consume exclusively nocturnal insects, which fly from late spring to autumn. Therefore, in winter, bats withdraw to caves, mine shafts, tree hollows or building crevices. During hibernation, their life functions are reduced to a minimum. They wake up a few times for brief periods during the winter. The caves in the Paduria Kraiului Bihor and Traskal Mountains provide so favourable wintering conditions that bats gather here even from the neighbouring countries. The experts of the Romanian Bat Protection Association have been following the number of hibernating bats regularly for several years. This is the most effective way to assess how much the bat population in the caves has changed from one year to the next. These sites are often difficult to access and inside the caves it is not always easy to reach the most remote passages. All fissures and niches must be thoroughly investigated. Horseshoe bats fully envelop themselves in their wings and hang alone or in loose groups. Other species cluster in smaller or larger groups. Due to the specific anatomy of their legs, clinging upside down does not require energy. Among the caves visited regularly in winter, there is one which is special in many respects. The Huda Lui Papara cave, formed by an underground stream. Advancing in the dark, one has to wade against the current in the abundant stream water, balance on the icy surfaces of rocks and climb along freezing cold waterfalls while the roar of rushing water in the narrow rocky bed suppresses all sounds. The inside view, however, compensates those who pass all these obstacles. First, they may admire stalagmite and stalactite formations, then catch sight of the small horseshoe bats always hanging solitarily. On the ceiling, closely huddled up against one another like a huge living carpet, there rest common pipistrelli and Schreiber's bats.
Their number cannot even be estimated accurately, but all in all, there are at least 100,000 bats here. This is one of the largest known hibernating caves in Europe. The temperature here is between 10 to 12 degrees all the time, and humidity is high, creating ideal conditions for peaceful rest throughout the winter. Unfortunately, only few Romanian caves can boast of such excellent natural protection that keeps unwanted guests away. Therefore, it became necessary to close some caves which play a significant role in the annual life cycle of bats. Certain caves, such as the Peshtera Ku Apa Din Valea Leshalui cave, may be easily accessed without special equipment. Here, in order to restrict uncontrolled visits, the entrance to the cave has been closed with a large metal grate. The gaps between the bars are large enough for the bats to comfortably fly through. Another security measure has also been implemented in this case, as a secondary line of defence. It meant actually the reconstruction of the original state of the cave entrance, since before a natural dam used to swell the water of the outflowing stream. The dam, blown up after the discovery of the cave, has now been rebuilt, and thus the small pond formed behind it serves the protection of bats too. As part of the Life Bat Conservation Program, the entrance of 15 caves holding special importance for bats has been closed. From now on, these caves may only be visited by small specialists or small groups of visitors with a professional guide, and only at a time when they do not disturb the tranquility of the bats. Information boards placed at the entrance of 40 caves remind visitors of the rules to be complied with to enter only in small groups, not to use an open flame for lighting, not to break off stalactites and stalagmites, and never to touch the bats. In the caves seen thus far, the grate mounted in front of the entrance guaranteed primarily peaceful rest for the hibernating bats. But in the Tsiklului cave, it is to ensure that another very important life cycle event is undisturbed. Now the ceiling is not covered by still, barely breathing bodies lined up next to one another, but a lively, bustling and noisy crowd. Mothers and pups, some bats, such as the Schreiber's bats for instance, live their lives connected to these caves. They overwinter, mate, give birth and raise their young here. The pups cling to their mother constantly for a while, but afterwards they're left alone while their mothers search for food.
In such a large crowd, accidents are bound to happen. Unfortunately, fallen youngs have little chance to get back onto the ceiling. In the eyes of bats, spacious high buildings are like replicas of natural cavities that they have been using during their evolution for over millions of years. Today the undisturbed attics of churches, old castles, mansions play the role of caves and tree hollows. Bats are not alone among home seekers. The large Kestrel family finds church steeples just as appealing places to live in as do bats. Under the tin roof most churches are covered by, summer heat rises to temperatures that are unbearably high for humans. Bats, however, feel completely comfortable under these seemingly extreme circumstances. Unfortunately, their presence sometimes becomes a nuisance for the people who use the buildings due to the clamour caused by them and to their faeces. That is the guano accumulated over the years. Luckily, there are cases when bats settle into completely abandoned buildings, as in this unused railway guardhouse on the bank of the Krishul Repede River. Lesser horseshoe bats gathered in a maternity colony here have found an ideal place to bring up their young. The nearby forests and the proximity of the river provide nursing females with sufficient insects for food without requiring long distance departures. The netting and ringing of bats is a relatively new method of exploration. The animals tangled in the fine silk threads of the net are immediately taken out and released soon after they've been captured. From the light, uniquely numbered metal ring attached to the humerus, individual animals can be easily identified when captured again. Thus it may be found out how much they stick to certain caves, how long they travel between their wintering and mating, breeding areas, and how long they live.
One of the effective means of active bat protection is providing them with adequate hiding and breeding places. Some species prefer smaller cavities, which are easy to substitute with artificial tree hollows. Along with the disappearance of old trees, the number of natural burrows has decreased too. However, artificial refuges made of durable material may replace them for a long time. Within the framework of the conservation project, a total of 300 bat boxes have been put up in 15 Natura 2000 protected areas. The proximity of water is always a great attraction for bats. The night flying insects living here and putting their eggs into the water provide a permanent food supply bats can count on even in bad weather conditions. For this very reason, a large number of bat boxes have been placed near streams and rivers. Despite the fact that the caves used by bats are often to be found in remote areas hardly accessible on foot, irresponsible tourism leaves behind its traces in the form of throwaway garbage. The inside of caves is not spared from littering either. The members of the bat conservation team have combed through hundreds of metres of underground caverns and gathered the trash accumulated over the years. One of the deepest caves of the country, the Betfia Arven, has long been used as an illegal dump by the inhabitants of the surrounding settlements. An enormous amount of garbage has been deposited in the 86 metre deep vertical cave. Plastic water bottles, electronic waste, expired medicines, junk metal, animal carcasses and who knows what else has been thrown into the cave thought to be bottomless. It took several days of hard work, the use of industrial alpinists, rope supported access technique to clean the cave. No. 
The guardrail now surrounding the entrance will hopefully withhold trash throwers in the future. The mysterious life of bats is difficult to get to know and study. Due to their nocturnal lifestyle and to the special ultrasonic orientation system these animals use, researchers need specific methods of exploration, which should be continuously updated in order to follow the development of technology. The meeting occasions and trainings where amateur observers and trained professionals can meet each other are of particular interest. On these occasions, in addition to the acquisition of theoretical knowledge, participants have the opportunity to test their skills in practice, too. During their normal night flights, bats often follow so-called linear structures, such as tree lines, hedgerows or watercourses. Along these well-known routes, they use their otherwise highly accurate ultrasonic radar more rarely. Consequently, they fall quite easily into bat researchers' nets. The capturing of different bat species offers a unique opportunity to get more closely acquainted with them and identify them. Moreover, one may also find out which species the bat community of a given area is composed of, what external parasites they have, as well as the morphological and size differences existing among them. These meeting occasions help dispel the myths surrounding these special creatures and bats may soon be held in as high esteem as all other animals around us. <laughs>